I want to cook some rice. What do I mean by that? Well, let me answer that question with another question. Do you think it's possible for a new Spanish speaking student to pronounce every word perfectly? Of course it is. That's because in Spanish, almost every letter is pronounced the same always. There are a few exceptions and we'll cover those as well. I'm going to teach you how to pronounce every letter perfectly every time. So with that, let's get started learning how to perfectly pronounce words in Spanish. The agenda for this lesson or the outline is a little bit different than the other lessons. So we will start with some vocabulary followed by some pronunciation guidelines and then the Spanish alphabet. And then we'll look at some vowels and how to pronounce them. Um, we'll look at some exceptions to the guidelines that we covered and then specific letters with unique pronunciation, unique or challenging pronunciations. I'll show you those followed by a few words that you can work on and then we'll wrap up with emphasis and accents. So there won't be any quiz or comprehension or even speaking practices because most of this lesson is actual speaking. Okay, so let's start with some vocabulary. And in this case, all of the vocabulary just happens to be verbs. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because there's a lot of them, but feel free to pause the lesson at any moment and work on these words that I'm giving, giving you. Okay, so say these along with me. Abrir. Abrir. Andar. Andar. Aprender. Aprender. Bailar. Bailar. Beber. Beber. Buscar. Buscar. Cambiar. Cambiar. Cancelar. Cancelar. Cerrar. Cerrar. Comer, comer, comprar, comprar, correr, correr, creer, creer, dar, dar, decir, decir, dormir. Dormir. Encontrar. Encontrar. Escribir. Escribir. Escuchar. Escuchar. Estudiar. Estudiar. Explicar. Explicar. Llamar. Llamar. Llorar. Llorar. Mirar. Mirar. Morir. Morir. Necesitar. Necesitar. Pagar. Pagar. Pedir. Pedir. Pensar. Pensar. Perder. Perder. Poner. Poner. Preguntar. Preguntar. Querer. Querer. Salir. Salir. Make sure you're not saying salir. Okay. That hard R sound actually doesn't exist in Spanish. It's salir. Seguir. Seguir. Sentir. Sentir. I'm almost saying sentid. Okay. Sentid is better than sentir. Sentir. 
Servir. Servir. Trabajar. Trabajar. Venir. Venir. Vivir. Vivir. All right, so here are some guidelines related to pronouncing words and letters in Spanish. Okay, so most letters in the language are pronounced the same way always. There are, however, a few exceptions, and we will look at those and we'll get really good at them. But just know that most of the letters have one single pronunciation. Second, letter combinations. These are considered as unique letters. They're almost like letters of their own. And they have their own pronunciation. So what is a letter, letter combination? It's similar to, in English, how we have the TH. And when you put TH together, you get the TH, TH, TH sound. Okay, that's a letter combination. And in Spanish, there are a few of these. And... Um, they each have their own pronunciation. They're almost considered letters of their own, okay? So they're that unique that they are considered letters of their own. In fact, a few of them actually have spots on the in the alphabet, the Spanish alphabet. And finally, vowels are extremely important to pronounce. Everything is important to pronounce correctly, but vowels especially because you change a vowel, like you change maybe an O to an A, or a U to an O, and suddenly you could sound really silly or even kind of offensive. So you have to be really careful with vowels. Let's look briefly at the Spanish alphabet. Now, what I'm going to give you are the names of the letters, not necessarily how the letters are pronounced. We'll get that. We'll get into that in just a minute. Sometimes the name of the letter is how the letter is pronounced, but I just want to go through the alphabet quickly with you. Um, as a way to kind of build and strengthen your foundation. A, B, C, Ch. Ch is a letter combination. Okay, there's a good example. It's got its own place here in the in the alphabet. D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, E, J. M, N, N, Y, O, P, Q, R, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, Y, and Z. Right, the letters or the letter combinations in red. These are um, letters that I want to pay particular attention to, so we'll talk about most of these on an upcoming slide. So just get used to this, this um, alphabet. If you need to take a little more time and go through it again, you're welcome to do that. But uh, this is just really to help strengthen your foundation. So let's keep moving along. All right, vowels. Vowels are really important. This is really kind of where we're gonna get started during this lesson. So I wanna make sure that you can pronounce your vowels properly. So let's start. Fortunately, the vowels in Spanish are the same as the vowels in English, A, E, I, O, and U. So let's start with A. Okay, the, the correct pronunciation of the Spanish A is how the O in ominous sounds. So ominous is an English word, and the O that's circled here in purple, that is the correct Spanish pronunciation. Ah, ah, ominous. Ah, ah, ominous. And then some examples in Spanish are amistad, amistad, and then año. Okay, año, amistad, not amistad, amistad, año, amistad, 
Año. You should be saying these words with me as we go through because they're good vocabulary words, but it's also necessary to just get a feel for how to pronounce these words. Let's move on to E. The E in Spanish is pronounced like the E in the English word less. Okay? Less. Often, people try to pronounce this a little bit differently. I'll, I'll show you what that is in just a second. Okay, so in Spanish, here are two words, elefante, elefante, and tener, tener. Let's go back to the word elefante. A lot of people in English, or, or a lot of English speakers would pronounce this, elefante, elefante, elefante. Don't, don't add the A at the end. It's elefante. Elefante, not elefante, elefante, like the e in the English word less, e, e, elefante, tener. Now let's talk about I. The I in Spanish is pronounced like the e in the English word even, even. Now let's look at some Spanish words, importante. Importante. Biblioteca. Biblioteca. Importante. Importante. Say these with me. Biblioteca. Biblioteca. The Spanish O is pronounced like the O in the word open. Oportunidad. Oportunidad, not oportunidad. A lot of a lot of you might have a tendency to say oportunidad. It's not it's not correct that way. Oportunidad and sonido, sonido. Oportunidad, sonido. Oportunidad, sonido. Finally, the Spanish U is pronounced like the Ooh, in the word loot. So in Spanish, we would say universidad. Universidad. Ooh, ooh, universidad. And also luna. Luna. Universidad and luna. Okay, feel free to pause this slide and repeat. Go back, rewind this slide, and go through these words again if you're having a difficult time. But this is a great starting point for anyone learning, wanting to learn how to um, pronounce in Spanish. The Spanish vowels, that's like step one. Okay, let's look at some of the exceptions to that rule I referenced earlier, how every letter in Spanish has the same pronunciation always with just a few exceptions. Okay, so here are the first exceptions. The, the letter C has two pronunciations. The first pronunciation is like the English K. It's that hard C, K, K, K sound. The second pronunciation is the soft C, like an English S. S, S, S. So first we're going to look at the hard C and some examples. Tu cambiaste. Tu cambiaste. You changed. Okay, these are also great vocabulary words. Tu cambiaste. Como. Como. Cubano. Cubano. Okay, so the hard C is used when there's a C-A, C-O, or C-U. The soft C now, on the right side of this chart, is again like the English S, S, -s and it's used when there is a C followed by an E or a C followed by an I. So the name Cesar, that's a, a name in Spanish, it means Caesar, Cesar, and the word ascensor. Ascensor, elevator. Ascensor. And finally, cimiento. Cimiento. Right, let's go to the D. So there's a hard D in English, like, like the, the D in English. And then there's a softer D that sounds more like a TH. 
Let's start on the left with the hard D. Um, and the hard D is used when D is at the beginning of a word in Spanish or when it follows N or L. Okay, so here's the first word, duro. It's a hard D, d, d duro. The second word, the D is in the middle of the word, but it's it's uh, following the N. So it's a, it's also a hard D. Andar, andar. Say these with me. Duro, duro. Andar, andar. Now the soft D, again, it sounds like a TH, so it's a little bit softer. Listen carefully as I, as I say these two words, and then you can say them with me in a moment. Sabiduría. Sabiduría. Did you notice? Sabiduría. Sabiduría. Okay, notice my D is not a hard sabiduría. It's soft. Sabiduría. And then next, bondadoso. Okay, the first D is hard because it comes after an N, but the second D in bondadoso is soft. Bondadoso. 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 Say these with me. Sabiduría. Sabiduría. Bondadoso. Bondadoso. Now the G. There's a soft G like G or G. It's kind of like an English H. And these are words like general. 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 It just means general. And gigante. Gigante. So notice that G, G, G sound. It's kind of like an English H with a little bit, a little bit more kind of um, roughness to it. Gigante. General, gigante. The hard G is, is more similar to the English G that we're familiar with. Ganar, gorra, guerra. Say these words with me. Ganar, gorra, guerra. A few more exceptions. Okay, the B and the V are really interesting because there is both a hard B and a hard V as well as a soft B and a soft V. Okay, so the, the hard B and the hard V sound very similar to each other. So we're going to start with those two on the left. And I purposed, purposefully have B and V here on this slide alone so that we can spend a little more time with them. Okay, so the again, the hard B and the hard V sound similar. And they sound like that hard English B sound that we are very familiar with. So, biblioteca. Biblioteca. Burrito. Burrito. Notice I'm saying a hard B at the beginning. B, B. Burrito. Now, likewise, with words that begin with V, a lot of times they use a hard B sound. Venir. Venir. Valer. Valer. Venir. Venir, valer, valer. Okay, so those, the hard B and the hard V are really hard. Uh, it's a hard sound. Now let's go to the soft side. Okay, now I will tell you something. Of all the slides that I'm showing you, for beginner speakers, this one is probably the least important if, assuming, you've got the left side down. If you pronounced all your B's and V's like the left side, you will be okay. Okay? This, the B and the V, um, the difference between the hard and soft B and V is very, very subtle. And so if there's any letter that you don't, don't get right, <laughs> it would be okay for it to be this one. Because over time, you will hear it enough that you'll start to correct it on your, on your own. 
But let's talk about the soft B and the soft V together. Okay, so they're just slightly softer than the, than the hard B that we just reviewed. Abejorro. 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 Ver. Ver. Villa. Villa. Okay, notice I'm not saying villa or ver or abejorro. I'm saying it's very soft and subtle. Abejorro. Ver. Villa. Conveniente. Conveniente. All right. Let's look at this little diagram that I have here. Okay, on the scale from a hard B on the left to the soft V on the right, these hard Bs are really hard. Ba, 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 ba. But these soft Vs, they're not all the way to the right over the V. They're kind of right in the middle. Like they're a real subtle B sound. They're right in between the English B and the English V. Okay. Now, if this is confusing or if you're not really getting it, don't worry. Like I said, of all the letters that you could get wrong, it's okay to get these ones wrong, the B and the V. As long as you're making an attempt to be subtle, um, I think you'll be okay. All right. So let's keep moving on. Here are some letters that uh, they don't necessarily have two pronunciations, but they are interesting or different or challenging enough that I wanted to address them with you. The first letter is the Spanish J. It's similar to the English H. So the name Juan. Notice um, it's not Juan or Juan, it's Juan. Okay, so the J takes on the sound of the English H, Juan. Say that with me, Juan. Okay, the word jueves, that's Thursday, jueves, okay. Now, the H in Spanish, fortunately, is silent, so it's easy. It's as if the H is not even there. Just make sure, this is one of the pitfalls that new Spanish speakers um, fall into, they, they try to pronounce the H. So they'll try to say something like hago, or jabia, or hacer. Don't, don't do that. Leave the H out. It's silent. So this word is properly pronounced. Ago. Ago. Or abia. Abia. Okay. Abia and ago. Next, the Spanish Z. Okay, in Latin America, the Spanish Z is similar to an English S. Conozco. Conozco. In Spain, the Z is similar to the English TH. Conozco. Conozco. Conozco in Latin America. Conozco in Spain. Now the double L. This is a great one. This is probably the most famous letter combination. All right. So it's a lot like the English Y. So the Y that we pronounce like the word y -y yellow. Y -y yellow. Me llamo. Me llamo. Okay. And in some countries, they're going to say me llamo, ya, ya, like a true English Y. And then some countries, they're going to stray from that a little bit and push the envelope into more of a ya, ya sound, like me llamo. If I were you, I would train to pronounce it like a very soft j sound. So, me llamo, me llamo. That way, if you go to Argentina, you can really kind of emphasize it and say, me llamo. You'll be ready to speak that way. But if you go to Mexico, you'll be like, oh, I can do this too. You'll be very versatile. Me llamo. So, my recommendation would be to train and um, educate yourself and practice by saying, me llamo. It's really subtle. Me llamo. Okay. The ñ. The ñ is an N with a little squiggly over top. It almost looks like a person's hair is placed right on top of that N. <laughs> and it's similar to the NY combo like the word canyon in English. 
So, mañana, mañana. Mañana means tomorrow, but en la mañana means in the morning. Okay, so mañana is has two meanings. Mañana. Pretty easy, and it's kind of a fun word to say. All right, my favorite part of this whole lesson right here. So the first R in Spanish is just a regular R, but you have to tap the R, okay? So remember, like I said earlier, a few minutes ago, there is no hard R, 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 R sound in Spanish. So if you're saying your verb infinitives like cantar or comer or hablar, you sound like a really, really newbie at the language. Try to change it so that you can tap that R. What I mean by tap that R is you're tapping the your tongue against the roof, the, where your teeth meet the roof of your mouth. So, cantar. Could you hear that little tap of my tongue against the roof of my of my mouth? Cantar. Panaderia. Panaderia. Could you hear that? Ra, ra, ra. Panaderia. Redondo. Redondo. Could you hear that little puff, that little tap that I'm, my tongue is hitting the top of my mouth? Redondo. Okay, and I have a YouTube video that uh, gets a lot of traffic because I help a lot of people learn how to roll their R's. So, um, to, if you are having a hard time with this R sound, here is the exercise that I want you to do. Take the word utter or the word butter and start to just, just repeat the word over and over, over again. Utter, utter, utter. The sound and the motion that your tongue is making when you say that word utter is the exact motion you want to make when you roll your R. So if you can say utter, then you can also tap your R and roll your R. There are a lot of people who say, well, genetically, I can't roll my R's, but it's not true. If you can say the word utter and the word butter, you can roll and tap your R. So start saying utter over and over again and get faster. Start saying it faster and faster and faster. And do this a lot. Repeat this exercise over and over and over again, and you'll get better at tapping and rolling your R's. So if I were you, I would do this. Utter, 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 almost to the point where it's hard to say it. Utter, 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 or butter, 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 okay? If you do that, that will start to train the muscles in your mouth how to roll and tap your R. Panaderia. Say these with me. Panaderia. Panaderia. Redondo. Redondo. Now let's go down to the rolled R. Okay? This is, um, a, it can be a little more difficult, but it's kind of like that helicopter or the cat sound that sometimes you hear like little kids make. Like, um, so if you have a hard time making this sound, repeat the same exercise that I said, and just try to say them, those words as fast as you can and, and just go through it as fast and as fast as you can. So utter, 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 utter and start to do that with your mouth to the point where you're getting really good at going utter, 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 utter. It's going to take you some time. It is. I admit, it's probably going to take you a good 30 minutes to really get down. And then your mouth is going to be tired and you'll have to take a break and do it tomorrow. So you got to do this a little bit each day in order to get good at it. And so the words for the double R are perro, perro, and barrio, barrio. Say these with me. Perro, barrio. Okay. All right, let's keep going. All right, I just want to give you a list of words really quickly to help with pronunciation. You can hear me say them, and then you can spend more time with them if you need to. Padre, padre, 
Padre. I've given you the translation, but I've also kind of given you like the, the breakdown of of how to pronounce this word. So, pa the re. Padre. 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 This is a great vocabulary word to help with pronunciation. It might seem like a simple word, but the the combination of the d, r and e are are kind of challenging. You you might notice that they are challenging, but that's that's good for you. You really can't make any progress unless you have some resistance, and this is this is that resistance. So if you'll get better at pronouncing padre, you'll be better at pronouncing other words. So let's keep going. Padre. Saber. Saber. Not saber. Not saber. And it's not padre, padre, it's padre, saber, okay? That tongue, your tongue is tapping just briefly. It's tapping the roof of your mouth and some then some air is coming out at the same time and it's pushing your tongue down off of the roof of your mouth. Saber, that's how you get that correct R sound, saber. And if you're having a lot of trouble, just say the word sab ed, like the name Ed, Edward, sab ed. That's pretty darn close to saber, saber, sab ed. That's pretty close. So you could say that as a kind of temporary way to get there, kind of like a, a middle step. But you really want to get to the point where you can say saber. Calle. This is a double L. Calle. Some countries it's going to be calle. And then some countries it's going to be calle. But I would pronounce it calle. Calle. And remember, it's not calle. Ye, ye, ye. It's calle. Calle. That E is really subtle. Libre. 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 Para ti. Para ti. If you're having trouble with this one, just think of a pot of tea sitting on your table. Para ti. Para ti. Para ti. Burrito. 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 Cocina. Cocina. This one's pretty easy. Cocina. And Valencia. Valencia, not Valencia, not v -v -v Valencia, it's Valencia. All right, so we're getting close to being done with this lesson. We've moved through this quickly. Um, here's just one last little uh, bit of education on emphasis and accents. All right, in Spanish, every word has emphasis. Emphasis is simply which vowel in the word um, gets the emphasis. Sometimes emphasis can be overridden by a written accent. All right, so rule number one is that words ending in a vowel, N, or S have their emphasis on the second to last syllable. Here are some examples. Bentana. Say, this, say them with me. Bentana. Notice that the emphasis is on that first A because it's the second to last syllable, ventana, biblioteca, biblioteca, escriben, escriben, saludos, saludos. Now, I think this is true, but this first rule is where most Spanish words, especially nouns, fit, okay? Most of the nouns that you, you use fit in this um, rule, they, meaning they end in a vowel and so the emphasis is going to be on the second to last syllable. So this is kind of the biggest bucket of words. Ventana, biblioteca, escriben, saludos. Okay, rule number two is that words ending in consonants except N or S because N or S was covered by the rule above. These words have the emphasis on the last syllable. So there's a lot of words in Spanish that end in L and D and R. 
So here are some examples. Español. Notice the emphasis is on that O. Español. Okay? You got to listen for that emphasis. Español. Hermandad. Hermandad. Not hermandad. It's hermandad. It's not español. It's español. Hablar. It's not hablar. It's hablar. Can you hear the emphasis on those words? Let's go back up to rule number one. Listen for the emphasis. Ventana. It's not ventana. It's ventana. Biblioteca. Not biblioteca or biblioteca. <laughs> that sounded kind of funny. Uh, it's not saludos. It's saludos. Okay, so emphasis is really, really important. Now let's jump down to rule number three. And it's just like the override rule. Any word that has a written accent overrides any of the emphasis rules that we've covered to this point. Okay, so avión has a written accent over the O, so we have to throw out rules one and two and just place the emphasis on the written accent. Avión, panadería, panadería, este, este, and finally, fácil, fácil. All right, we covered a lot of territory here. This is a an extremely, extremely helpful lesson. And the one piece of advice that I would give you is to find one of your favorite books in Spanish and start reading that book out loud. Your objective is not to understand and be entertained by the book. Your objective is to train the muscles in your mouth to speak Spanish properly. As you go through the book, you will notice that within just a day or two, your pronunciation and the muscles in your mouth will, will make a dramatic change. And you'll even hear people say, wow, your accent is really, really impressive. All right, so with that, let's move on to the next lesson.